Hey everyone, I'd love to welcome you all back to my podcast, I Like It Raw. My name is Mikala Leinani. Let me adjust myself. If this is your first time here to listen to my podcast, welcome. Um, this is called I Like It Raw because I like to talk about anything and everything raw, taboo, and real. I get into the nitty gritty in here. That's what this podcast is about. So... I really just want to dive in. We are in the month of February. This is the first Friday of the month, y'all. The first Friday of the month. And seeing as though first February is black about black history. So happy Black History Month to all of you. There will be some episodes coming in for you all. Um, I'm not a historian. I was never good in history class. So I ain't about to be dishing you facts like that. But I'm going to be dishing you facts, okay? So just stay tuned for those episodes, those episodes to come. But what you can also associate February to is love. And within love comes so much more than just the word or, you know, kissing people, touching people, um, having feelings for people. Love also means support. And that's, well, that's what it means to me anyway. Love means support. Love means something without question. Love means having someone's back. Love means the doing of something without a need of reciprocation, but that reciprocation is given regardless. Love is done without expectation. So with February being a month about love, I really want to dive into one of the biggest things that matter to me, which is supporting each other. Support comes in so many different forms. It can be verbal. It can be physical. It can be emotional, intellectual. But to me, I have witnessed a lot of lack thereof support um, by people that say they would love me, you know. Love is a word that typically gets thrown around easily, which is why I don't, I don't like to use the word that much, honestly. And when it comes to a point of me saying that I love someone, it's because it's not just the love of, you know, being around somebody. It's more so the interaction that I've had, the encounters that I've had that has shown me down to your heart, you are a good person and you are here supporting me in whatever I do. And that's important because I've had situations, well, I've had a situation, considering I'm 25 and only been in one true relationship. In my previous relationship of seven years, I was not supported in what I wanted to do. And that is very upsetting because if somebody says they love you, regardless they agree with what you want to do in your life or not, they should support you. And that's just my fair opinion on it. Um, in my previous relationship, my ex, he really didn't fully support me in being an actress. He would tell me that I would probably get lost in a role. And that is just kind of something, you know, that made him uncomfortable because one, he wasn't a guy that wanted to be in the limelight. But I mean, at the same time, it was just like saying that I'm going to get lost in character because he thought mentally I was unstable because in our relationship, it was a very toxic relationship to where when I would sit there and try and converse with him about anything, my body would start shaking so frantically that I couldn't even stop it. And I don't even know if he even noticed that. But it was like me shaking out of fear, out of hurt, out of pain. And not fear that he would put his hands on me, but when you're constantly belittled in a situation, told that you're not good enough to a certain degree, you know, I was also told that if I acted up or did something that he would go and cheat on me with a girl that I seen, you start to have certain reservations about yourself and things that you want to do and you will make yourself smaller and you won't achieve the dreams that you have because you feel like you're supposed to be with this someone who doesn't support what you want to do in the first place. And 
I witnessed and endured that shit firsthand. And that shit is not it. It's just not. But that stood out to me. Saying that I'm going to get lost in character, I mean, I don't understand where that came from, but in a sense, I do because I see that. If you all seen the Game of Thrones, the guy who played the Game of Thrones, um, uh, something dragons, the girlfriend, I mean, the boyfriend to the girlfriend of the dragons, he ended up having to go to get counseling and things like that because he was so, indu- like, he became his character. And it was so devastating for him with the way that it ended that, you know, he had to get counseling because it was, it was as if it was happening to him. At the same time, when it comes to me, I have never even been given the opportunity to truly be who I was in front of this man. So there comes with the shaking. I felt like if anything I said was taken in were taken out of context or taken the wrong way, it would just end up in a blow up or an argument. So me having to conceal who I truly am just as a person to now be told I'm going to get lost in a character when I can't even truly show who I am, it just kind of, it just blew my motherfucking mind, y'all. I ain't even okay. It should, it, that shit blew my mind. But all in all, it really made me feel like he just didn't want me to succeed. He didn't want me to do what I really wanted to do. And it was upsetting because it's like, if you truly say that you love someone and you care for someone, and especially with the longevity that I had in this relationship, if you really wanted to see me succeed and grow, why would you say those type of things? Why would you be that way? So it makes you, well, shit, it made me not really go for my dreams it made me feel like that it was unachievable and that's not someone who you're supposed to be with because anybody that you are with should support you a thousand percent so I come to now because I have came out of that situation gracefully I am grateful to have decided to Remove myself from that situation because that situation wasn't serving me for my highest and greatest good doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I knew as soon as I popped out the pussy, like, I'm an actress. I'm a podcaster. Yes, I knew this shit early as fuck, y'all. Not everybody knows their calling, but I knew mine. And for me to have these dreams and aspirations popping out the pussy to being with somebody that, you know, didn't give a shit for real and didn't want me to do those things hell wouldn't even role play with me in bed because you think he said I was gonna get too tied into role playing all the time and I wouldn't be able to have sex regularly like we wasn't even able to have sex because the shit was garbage but that's beyond the point now I have been around people that have nothing but genuine love and support for me And I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Like, words can't even explain. And it's a different type of feeling, you guys. My question to myself was, who showed me support? And you would be so surprised. Because a lot of people that show me support, support, support. What am, where is my mind at? A lot of the people that have shown me support aren't even in my family. And... I mean, a lot of the times it's crazy because your family does not support what you do. And it's sometimes out of jealousy or fear, like, or, you know, just being a hater, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that's a whole nother episode that will be coming this month. So we'll talk about that later. But some of the people that's really shown me support has been... My friends, I don't have many friends, but I got two people that I would consider friends. Random insert, because yes, I have two people that I consider friends, but I do have um, 
a person that I would consider family at this point, um, Kamal Smith. I talked about him in a different episode um, in regards to being supported, actually, um, showing love to me in public, uh, getting on the mic at karaoke nights, you know, just shouting my name out and shouting out what I do and shouting out my podcast. Um, He's not a friend to me at this point. He's family, so come on, what's good, nephew? Um, But he has shown me an immense amount of love and support through everything. I mean, everything and anything. And it's truly appreciated because this is also a man that gives me more opportunities. And it's imperative to be around people that want to see you succeed because, I mean, if they don't want to see you grow and glow up, what the fuck are they doing around? And when I'm saying this man has given me opportunities, I truly appreciate that. He's given me opportunities. He's put me in movies. He's had me apply to things and I've gotten in. And I, I mean, I can't express it enough. Thank you so much, Kamal. But back to the program, because I just like it honestly slipped my mind when you doing a podcast you be fucking forgetting names and all that type of shit but you know we just insert insert (laughs) um tam and sin uh y'all know who y'all is so i appreciate you um the baby daddy (laughs) no longer am i pregnant but he definitely has shown me a ton of support in all that I've done, even as a dancer. Um, and I appreciate that because I've had friends that's like, oh, well, I want to dance. I want to do this. I want to do this. But I don't know if this nigga going to say this or this nigga going to say that. And first thing I told them is like, if that nigga has anything to say about what you do besides supporting you and wanting to make sure you're safe at the end of the day, that nigga is not for you. That person is not for you. Like, Period. That person is not fucking for you. We're all here to live out our own experiences. And a motherfucker that wants to control what you do because fears that they have, that ain't it. Unless it's about your safety and knowing that you can protect yourself and you will protect yourself. Like, shouldn't shit else be said, to be honest with you. So he's definitely been supportive. Every time I would talk to him, like, I'll talk to him about shit. You know, I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas in here trying me and blah, blah, blah. Now, do I think he wants to hear it 24-7? Like, if a nigga hitting on me or shit like that? No, I don't tell him every time a nigga hitting on me. Because, uh, of course, like, people gonna fucking talk to me. Um, But in situations where I feel uncomfortable, blah, blah, blah. Like, the first question he gonna ask me, do you have your motherfucking gun? Yep. Yep, and if I don't, then I'm getting cut into In the way of love, you know what I'm saying? Not in no rude way, but he genuinely just wants me to protect myself So, I've had support from him, shit, even his friends Um, And that shit means a lot to me Because, again, you do not get the same support Even from your own family Hell, half the time you're told to not do what you want to do from your own family. (laughs) Like, this shit is wild. So, with that being said, I mean, it's just made me feel good, obviously. It kind of just confirms that I'm going down the right path continuously. When I'm telling that, when I'm getting told that, you know, you're, you're really, you're inspirational to me I love seeing you do what you do because it makes me want to do what I'm supposed to do like you inspired me to do this you inspired me to do this and this is from people that I am friends with that's told me that and I appreciate that because that's what I'm here to do I'm here to inspire I'm here to enlighten I'm here to give my point of view on things I'm here to share my experience because I'm not afraid of the judgment that people like to pass along that isn't even their fucking right to do but as a human these motherfuckers they be thinking that they have the right to pass judgment 
But then they, you know, they believe in the Bible and believe that God is the only person that can pass judgment. But then, you know, I could just, I could dive into that and say the Bible ain't fucking real. And then God is in you. So when you judge, you know, actually you ain't even supposed to judge because you're supposed to have love for everybody. And everybody's here to follow, the, to follow their own divine path. But that's, that would be me diving into a whole nother a whole nother episode, a whole nother topic, which we ain't gonna get into because this episode be long as fuck. But I just, I'm not afraid of the judgment that comes. Even with the episode of me being pregnant and having an abortion. Hell, my own mom's like, I told you not to post that. What the fuck? Why? My grandmother saw she was pregnant. Yeah. First off, I'm 25 motherfucking years old. 25 motherfucking years experience. My mom was pregnant with me at 25 and had me at 26. At the same time, it's just like, I don't have time for other people to project their fears, to say what I shouldn't be doing because that's my business. So how do I feel about that? I have no feelings about it. All I can do is feel sorry for the people that don't want to follow in their true path and are worried about other people following their own paths. Because... They don't in some way want to see them succeed because they haven't succeeded doing what the fuck they want to do because they're too afraid to make that move. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it's people that's close to you. Like, there's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can feel because when you start getting into those feelings, that shit can start bringing you down. And it's called energy transfer. Don't let these motherfuckers project energy that ain't yours onto you. Their fears, their hurt, their pains, their worries. Don't let them project that energy onto you so you don't, you know, do what the fuck you want to do. Like, that's what will get you fucked up. Like, truly fucked up. Shit. And it's like, even from friends, like, it's not just friends that support me, but a lot of the people that I do have on YouTube... I'm so appreciative because when I actually started posting on YouTube, I talked about one of the touchiest subjects for women, our pussy. You know what I'm saying? Like, and don't nobody want to dry pussy at that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look, I had touched on the topic of me having a dry motherfucking coach. And I was open, very transparent about it. And in some ways, in that video, I might have blamed, I did blame myself. I did blame myself, but looking back on it now, a lot of the information that I gave off or gave out in that video helped other women. When I'm getting messages from women saying, oh my God, thank you so much. You saved my marriage. That touches my fucking soul. I saved your marriage. Like, because for some women, it is things that they are lacking in their diet. And to be able to help other people, not in just that, but like even in the nose piercing video, oh my God, I just got my nose pierced. You know, this helped me so much. Thank you. Those little things, those comments, they mean so much. And it's the people that don't even know you and those people that, you know, you have some close people that do support you, but a lot of the people that don't even know you will support you even harder than your family or than a lot of people you know will. So it feels good. It's always confirmation that I'm doing the thing that I'm supposed to be motherfucking doing, which is me. So a few things that you can do if somebody doesn't support you, say fuck them. Fuck them. Shit, there ain't a few things, nigga. Just say fuck them. <laughs> Honestly, because you don't want to constantly surround yourself in a circle of, of, of people with a lack of mentality. Um... A down, a Debbie Downer, you know, you don't want to surround yourself with that. Oh, well, I don't think you should do it because it is, nigga, fuck you. Nigga, go. You ain't welcome to your no more. Like, you got to be honest with yourself. Not everybody can go along this journey with you to your successful place. You might hinder yourself from being successful trying to keep people around that don't want you to do well, but they're your friends or they're your family. All this shit is a physical realm. If they are not meant to come, they are not meant to come. You have to be able to decipher the people that are coming with you and the people that aren't. 
And you have to decipher if you feel good or if you don't. Because a lot of the times you won't feel good. And you'll just keep lying to yourself doing the same fucking thing. Shit. Example. A lot of your friends drink and smoke, but you don't want to drink and smoke no more. Because you feel like it's hindering your growth. But you continue to drink and smoke just because you want to be around these people. Because these are people you've been around for so long and you're comfortable. But you know it's not getting you anywhere. And you feel bad about it. You really do. But in the moment when you're taking in these spirits from that alcohol and then you're diluting your depression. Well, I ain't even going to say diluting your depression, but enhancing your depression with uh, fucking weed and just, you know, putting a little cover on it with the spirit. You know what I'm saying? You can get through that time period and feel good for that moment. But it's all a facade because once all that shit is done with, you sitting here like, damn. And then what do you need to do? It again. Come on now. If you know what is holding you back, if you know the people that are holding you back, you need to cut them ties. Don't you really want to be happy? So like I've been saying, being an actress is like, it's everything to me. Being an actress, being a model, doing anything and everything that I want to do, dance, all that is everything to me. And I'm going to always do exactly what the fuck I want to do because I don't care about what anybody has to say. And that includes the person that I'm with. And again, if that person is not willing to support you and what you want to do, anything that you want to do, I'm not saying they have to agree. Everybody has a difference of opinion. But if they don't support you, that someone that you're holding on to, that person, whoever it is, is not meant for you. Not meant to be in your life. Not meant to be upon this journey with you. Because it's your journey to take. You're going to meet different spirits, different souls, different people. And you should be supported through what you go through just as you would support somebody else. And that's when you have to sit back and actually ask yourself, are they reflecting energy that I be giving off then? Do I not support people in things that they do because I don't like their decisions? You have to sit there and let that be a reflection period because that will be very eye-opening for you if you are also a person that does the same thing but can't take the shit that you dish. You know what I'm saying? All in all, this is a time for you to move accordingly for yourself. Go along the path that makes you happy. Don't be content because of the people that you've been around for so long. Longevity means nothing. Happiness and love is all. And you can never fully be in love with yourself if you're not happy, truly. You got to support yourself first. Because with supporting yourself, you'll find others or others will find you and support you because they see that you are just being true to who you are. Love yourself. Be yourself. And do what you need for yourself. But all in all, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode right here. I appreciate you all so much for coming to listen and watch this episode of I Like It Raw with your girl. Please make sure if you are watching me on YouTube that you like, comment, subscribe, and share this episode with everybody you motherfucking know. And if you're watching me on Spotify, go ahead and share this episode. If you do have an IG, go ahead and follow me at Mikala Leinani, M-I-K-A-L-A-L-E-I-N-A-N-I. The podcast Instagram at I Like It Raw Podcast. My skating Instagram at MK Skates with two Z's at the end. And my cat's Instagram at onyx.n.eclipse. But until the next time, make sure y'all stay high, strapped up, and safe. And I'll see y'all in my next episode.